The following program is available in high definition on channel 700. This program is designed and produced by the community with the support of TV Kojiko. I'm Mayor Rick Goldring and welcome to Burlington Matters. Burlington Matters is a new program on TV Kojiko where I get the opportunity to discuss uh, topical issues and opportunities and challenges within the city of Burlington with community leaders. I'm very pleased today to have an esteemed panel. We're going to be talking about intensification and growth in the city of Burlington. We're at a different point in the history of our city and we're going to be talking about that uh, during this program. First of all, I'd like to introduce our, our guest today. Uh, to my immediate left is our city manager, James Ridge. And uh, besides James is uh, Ward 1 Councillor representing the Aldershot, Tyandaga, Maple and Beach communities in the city of Burlington, uh, Councillor Rick Craven. And uh, along with Rick is our Acting Director of Transportation, Mr. Vito Talone. So gentlemen, uh, welcome to Burlington Matters. Uh, James, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, you've been with the city of Burlington for about, <coughs> excuse me, about seven months. That's right. Can you give us just a little bit of your background and tell us what the job of city manager entails? I've worked in a number of municipalities. This is my fourth. I've also worked in uh, provincial government and uh, in the military for a number of years, uh, as well as the University of British Columbia. Um, city manager is a, a wonderful job and uh, one I've held, uh, had the honor to hold in a couple of municipalities. Um, I'm the most senior civil servant in the municipality. I tend to spend a great deal of my time working with the mayor and council on uh, big policy issues, strategic issues, which in fact we're working on right now. Um, I, uh, I, I do sort of coordination of big issues across uh, the organization. The one thing I don't do, which runs a bit contradictory to my, my title, I don't actually manage the city on a day-to-day -day basis. We have a very, very talented uh, group of staff uh, at a range of levels who actually do to the day-to-day -day management. So I don't get uh, all that actively involved in that. But uh, um, because we are in so many businesses in the city uh, and provide so many services to the community, uh, I play more of a coordinating role than a day-to-day -day management role. Great. Well, thank you very much for that. And he's a great dresser. <coughs> he dresses extremely well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Goes for the In any event, we're, we're here today to talk about the current state of the city of Burlington with regard to growth and intensification. And we are at a different point in our history. And, and Rick, you've been on council since uh, 2000. Can you contrast where we are today in 2015 to where we were in 2000 when you were first elected? Yeah, it's a great story, uh, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for asking. You know, what a difference a decade, a decade and a half can make. And uh, a lot of the discussion in the West End about intensification is centered around the Drulo apartment buildings, as you know. So about a decade ago, when these buildings were under construction, we heard a lot of concern in the community. There was a lot of anxiety, there was a lot of worry about the impact of these buildings on the neighborhood, which is essentially a no low-density neighborhood in West Aldershot. But as I say, what a difference a decade can make. Two years ago, I made a presentation in these buildings to the residents who live there and had a gentleman come up to me and say, you know, Councillor Craven, I want to apologize to you because a decade ago, I gave you a really hard time about these buildings and now I live here. And that's the story of these buildings in the west end of Aldershot. That's the story of the introduction of intensification to Aldershot. Um, what we have done with the Drulo apartment buildings is added about 900 residential homes in high density in the west end. And these homes are now providing a place for downsizing seniors in Aldershot, which is to a very large degree an older community. These seniors can now remain in our community, live in the Drillo apartment buildings, and still enjoy all of the amenities that they've had experienced in their entire lives in the Aldershot community. So we've provided housing for these folks right in their own neighborhoods, and they really, really like it. In addition to that, these buildings are driving the microeconomy in the West End. We're now beginning to see shops and stores and services come back to the West End, whereas in the 90s, they were leaving the West End. The increased population and the increased customer base is driving that. So a lot of positive results. 
James, overall, what's driving our, our situation? What are the key influencers with regard to where we are at with regard to development, residential, employment, or otherwise, uh, within the city? We're <coughs> certainly in a unique situation uh, in, uh, in this part of uh, the Greater Toronto Area in that uh, through a combination of both uh, political decisions at council and uh, and policy decisions at the at the provincial and regional level we've stopped expanding outwards uh, whereas many other GTA suburban municipalities are continuing to put single-family home uh, residential neighborhoods out into uh, former cornfields uh, we've made a conscious decision to stop that uh, to begin to grow within our existing boundaries uh, which is a very different type of growth it's uh, it, it typically means uh, repurposing um, uh, built form that has been there for many cases for decades. Uh, it means a very different conversation with the community about uh, how do we go about putting buildings, perhaps taller or more dense buildings. Uh, Councillor Craven has been dealing with that issue and leading that issue for, for many years. Um, and, and we're among the first. Uh, we're certainly among the first in Halton Region to make that transition uh, from expanding outwards to expanding uh, within our boundaries. Um, the other municipalities I've worked in have all been through that transition in some cases decades ago, so it's certainly possible, certainly uh, possible for, for municipalities to grow responsibly and continue to expand their population and their job base uh, without uh, expanding outwards, but we're one of the first. So. So the word intensification is what we use to describe it. Can you sort of give a layman's definition of what intensification means? It typically means taking a piece of property that had uh, a certain height and density or amount of building on it and putting something that's that's bigger. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be taller, but it typically means uh, taking what might have had uh, uh, two or three homes or an old factory uh, or an old commercial property and, uh, and, and making it a more intense use, as the name implies, uh, having more people living there, more jobs there. Uh, but again, people tend to uh, relate it directly to height, that intensification automatically means 30-story uh, buildings, and uh, in some parts of Toronto and elsewhere that's been the case. But uh, I'm, I'm reminded many times that for, for decades, the densest part of the city of Toronto were the blocks around the St. Lawrence Market, which are not particularly tall buildings, but uh, there are a lot of people living there, a lot of jobs there. Uh, so um, it, it, it really really means in its simplest form, simply doing more with the land that, uh, that is aging out and ready for a transition. So Vito, when we have more people, more jobs in our urban envelope, and that obviously increases the traffic. Um, so that's a major concern that we hear from, from people about, about the growth in the city. Um, what are we doing as a city to making sure we address uh, traffic congestion uh, that we have, or do we have traffic congestion in your view? Maybe we start there. Well, we, 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 can, we can certainly start there. And, and there's always going to be uh, traffic generated by all forms of development. There, there's, there, there's no hiding it, regardless of whether it's in intensification form or whether it's uh, in a low-lying greenfield form. Traffic congestion is, ju is just in it. It's just what that, what that <coughs> level of congestion is. The city of Burlington experiences some form of traffic congestion, but when we consider that the peak hours of the day uh, probably account for two to four hours of, um, of, of time, and there are some intersections that experience um, at or near capacity conditions. So we, we, do, we do have to put those into relative terms, and, 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 uh, and, and when we analyze a development, we have to take those things into account. So um, we do follow a process to protect against that. We do analyze uh, development applications to make sure uh, that the traffic generated by those developments can be accommodated by by our transportation network. Um, if it can't, uh, the development is either scaled back, we ask for, for a scaling back of that development, um, or uh, we ask for certain improvements. A, a good example is the Walmart development on Fairview Street. We had a lot of, we had a lot of community angst about that development. Um, it, 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 it did go in. We asked for improvements to that intersection, and I'd hazard to think that that, that location actually operates better than it did prior to the Walmart. Well, there were some improvements as a result and of Walmart exactly, going there. Exactly, so, <coughs> uh, so, so we, we, take so, we take some solace at times at, at getting some um, improvements made, and they were, uh, they were improvements that were planned 
um, in the past, but Walmart was the trigger that allowed us to go forward, and, and, and Walmart foot, uh, foot the majority of that bill. Um, so, you know, in some areas of the city, conditions will allow us to grow more than in other areas. So we, we look at those locations. If, if it's a location where traffic conditions are not that significant, then, th then you'll see us accept those, uh, the, the, those developments and not have any objections. In other areas, we may have that, that scaling back effect. And, uh, and our message really is intensification isn't um, for every area of the city, as our planners will tell you, there are certain areas of the city that, which will intensify and others that cannot. And, and it's much the same for the transportation system. We, we will uh, likely be more accepting of intensification in some areas of the city and in some areas of the city we'll ask for um, some modification. So that, that, that's, that, that's, that's really our role um, as a transportation department uh, to, to ensure that it happens. So the Plains Road Fairview Corridor is one of our major areas for intensification going forward. And, and Rick, there's been uh, many new buildings along along the Plains Road Corridor. Uh, can you talk about the progress that's been made? And we've talked about the Drulo Apartments, the 900 units, but there's been other units and, and they've replaced other different land uses. Uh, can you tell us about the progress in the last decade? It's important <coughs> to understand that we have made intensification work for us along the Plains Road corridor in the past decade. And it's important for people to know and understand that Plains Road didn't look like it does today 15 years ago. 15 years ago there were 11 used car lots on Plains Road, 7 abandoned gas stations and 2 adult massage parlors. As a result of intensification, as a result of what James said, better, more intensified use of the land, we've attracted new, really attractive buildings to the Plains Road corridor that have not only added population, which supports the churches, the schools, and the shops, but also added attractive and exciting new streetscape. I mean, think about what we've done along Plains Road. We've widened the sidewalks in many areas. We've added garden areas. We've added streetscaping with benches and all kinds of amenities. So we believe we've made intensification work for us. Now we've got a long way to go along the Plains Road corridor because of course it's a seven kilometer stretch and there's still remnants of the old 40s and 50s and 60s style development along there, that old highway style. But I think we're clearly making progress through intensification. So one of the things that we, we've, we've heard from residents, uh, you probably more than me, but we've heard from residents that there is a dearth of, of retail services in the west end of the city. And I can think, uh, when my mom taught at Aldershot High School many years ago, there was the Towers Plaza and the Dominion Store and the liquor store and so on and so forth, and that's where the Drew Low apartment buildings are, where those 900 new homes are. So we hear from so many people about the lack of, of retail services and particularly a grocery store. But but uh, you know, one of the things people don't realize is that the density per household, right, the number of people per household is different today than it was in the 60s or, or 70s. What are the conditions that are necessary for us to see a return of more retail services in the Aldershot, West Aldershot area? Well, you're absolutely right, Mr. Mayor. We do want to attract more and better retail services along the Plains Road corridor. And the key feature in all of that, and I know this because we talk to these retailers, the key feature is simply population, demographics. They want more people living in the West End. They want younger families because younger families simply buy more and we're going through that period of demographic change in the Aldershot community. But as you point out there were an average of more than four people living in every Aldershot home in the 60s and now there's an average of about two people living in every Aldershot home. So we need to continue the process of increasing our population and this was brought home to us recently when we pursued RABA, the grocery store chain and RABA did an analysis of West Aldershot and concluded and sent us an email about this saying you simply don't have enough population yet to attract our grocery store. So we're continuing to work on it but the good news is we still have 250 businesses along the Plains Road corridor and we're attracting more every day. We just opened up 40,000 square feet of new retail space in the West End. So if you're just tuned in, we're, we're talking to Councillor Rick Craven from Ward 1 in the City of Burlington, Vito Talone, our, uh, our uh, Acting Director of Transportation for the City, and James Ridge, our City Manager. And we're talking about intensification and growth within the City of Burlington. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with more discussion.
Welcome back to Burlington Banners. I'm Mayor Rick Goldren. We're talking about intensification and growth within the city of Burlington on this particular episode of Burlington Matters. Uh, James Ridge, our city manager. It's not just the city of Burlington that's making decisions that's, that's driving what's happening in the city. We, we have to be uh, respond to and be influenced by uh, federal and provincial policy. Can you enlighten us? Absolutely. There are a whole range of factors that uh, uh, influence our growth as a city and there's sort of a cascading conversation. There's growth in Canada generally. Uh, some of that is just population growth. Some of it is interprovincial migration. So a, gr a large piece of that is is immigration. Uh, the province itself looks at the province of Ontario and uh, sets targets for for growth. That then cascades down, and there are conversations at regional governments about uh, how large the regions should grow, how that should be allocated within the municipalities within the regions, and that happens sort of cyclically over a period of years. We're in the midst of those conversations right now with Halton Region, which we're a member. Uh, so, so it, that's really a, a conversation about allocating out the general growth within southern Ontario. But there are other things that happen as well. Um, uh, I'm one of those people who just moved here from, uh, from Western Canada, one of many hundreds who move across, or many thousands who move across uh, Canada each year. Immigration is a huge factor, uh, and, uh, and we want to be a city that's welcoming to immigrants, uh, uh, both em uh, economic migrants, uh, immigrant investors, and uh, most importantly and, and topically, uh, refugees. We have uh, we have growing, uh, uh, increasingly diverse community, particularly in our newer neighborhoods, and we want to be a community that uh, uh, people new to Canada feel welcomed, feel supported, and feel that they can begin a new life. So, Councillor Craven, we certainly talked about the, the Plains Road, Fairview Corridor. What are some of the other areas that uh, we can grow in within the city? Well, obviously, we need to move toward our mobility hubs, Mr. Mayor. And as you know, the provincial government has essentially directed us to look at opportunities to develop our mobility hubs. So that means around our GO stations, we're going to intensify over the next decade. We're going to bring mixed-use development to those areas that are going to attract residential units in a higher density than we're used to in the past, also with the services and amenities, and indeed uh, public plazas that will make those livable areas within walking distance of the GO stations. We're going to see that in Aldershot. We're already beginning to see an application from the Addy folks to build several hundred townhouses within walking distance of the GO station. In the long run, that's a good thing for us, a really good thing. And, and recognizing that uh, we want a grocery store in the west end of the city, this can only help that Absolutely. eventual objective. Um, Vito, we talk about walkable communities and we look at the mobility hubs, both the Aldershot uh, GO Station area, the Burlington GO Station area, as being great opportunities to grow uh, new neighborhoods in a more intense form, close to the GO stations and close to other forms of transportation. Can you, uh, can you make some comment with regard to um, how we can make that happen uh, with regard to transportation and not have everybody uh, that moves into that area um, own one car. It's a good question. It's a, it's, it's a really um, it's a really tall order. Um, primarily because Bur Burlington has historically just been an auto-oriented uh, community, like 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 many communities. Um, our, our new transportation master plan is really a blueprint for that plan moving forward. Um, our future transportation system has to be, um, you know, can still include the automobile, but not exclusively to the automobile. And there, there are a number of areas in the city right now where that just doesn't happen. It's exclusively an auto, um, uh, it, it's, it, it's an auto place. There's no sidewalks, there, there, there are no transit, there's no bike lanes. And it, so even if people wanted to travel, uh, th there would always be an excuse not to do it because the, the facilities just aren't there. Um, our aim really is to enhance overall mobility and sustainable transportation. Um, so it's not just catering just to the automobile, um, that required just bigger, wider, more roads. Um, and in today's day and age with property values in Burlington, that is just becoming unaffordable. Um, to, to, to think that we can six lane some of our arterial roads in an affordable fashion is just, um, is, is just not there for us. Um, we want a balanced transportation system. Um, it, it's, it's not all or one, so, so we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to uh, get rid of the automobile. Some people fear that it's, that, that it's an attack on the automobile. It's not that, but it's just giving people choice. And, and, and just think as a driver, if, you, if you're not going to use those facilities, um, you know, a car, a, a car ahead of you, uh, that, that, that person could be in a, in a bicycle beside you or on a sidewalk beside you as opposed to being in front of you. So it helps, so it helps everyone. Um, so what does that mean when we look at development applications? Um, 
It means that um, sidewalks, pedestrian connections, transit stops, transit stations, cycling facilities, car share opportunities, um, subsidized transit passes for developments, well thought out building designs so they're not so that they don't turn their backs to the street. They actually have, and, and, and we have had those experiences and challenges on, 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 on Plains Road. And as more and more happen, you will get more and more of those uh, developers to actually open their doors to the street because they, they, they will see those pedestrians. So it's, so it's, it's a slow process, but, um, but, but it's something that we've just got to keep um, uh, you know, coming back to. Um, so, you know, where once we would have never given a second thought in reviewing a development application, we would look at driveway access, is there plenty of parking, are the parking spaces big enough, are the parking aisles there? Never really given much of a second thought. What our process is going to be going forward is to look at all of those applications with a much more keener eye. So if someone walked to that development, how would they get there? If someone cycled, if someone took transit, how would they get there? As, as, as we develop more of those facilities, those alternative modes become more viable because um, we want we want to hear the end of uh, of the of the, uh, of the conversations. Well, I, I can't take transit because um, it's it's not convenient. I, I can't get I can't get to where I'm going on foot. So uh, the more and more we do that, I I, th I think we'll, we'll we'll see that shift to alternative modes. I know uh, I've heard often from people that have moved to the downtown in relatively recent years after they've been there for six months or a year, uh, they might have moved in uh, and they have two cars, but they sell one of their cars because they don't need it because there's so much access to services and, uh, and walkability uh, within the downtown. Um, We've got lots of work underway right now. We have a strategic plan we're working on. Uh, we're doing an official plan review, and uh, we're working on a transportation master plan under your leadership, uh, Vito. So we have those are three key documents for the future of the city. Where are we at with all those? James is a city manager, overseeing what's going on in the city. Where are we at, and what are the opportunities for uh, the community to, to connect with us and give us some input? There will be many, many opportunities. Uh, the strategic plan is well underway. Way, and Council's been meeting just this week uh, to look at uh, perhaps a next to final version of our strategic plan and it talks directly to issues of how will we grow, where will we grow, what is uh, the priority and sequencing of that. That then informs our official plan which has been underway for some time uh, and we're going to try to move that uh, through uh, uh, reasonably rapidly early next year. There will be multiple opportunities for community input as we do that and that's sort of the blueprint. That's the, the legal policy blueprint that's required of every municipal that spells out how the city will grow and what our, our conditions and concerns are about uh, it growing uh, literally region by region and area by area. And then, uh, as every application comes through, uh, even when those first two plans are done, there are then, again, multiple opportunities for the community to come out, uh, express both their concerns and, and support, uh, and ask questions about the development. So, uh, so we're starting at the high level. We then get into the legal policy level and then once again every single application uh, one at a time there are multiple opportunities for community input. And Vita with regard to the transportation master plan you talked about looking through a lens of alternative forms of transportation make sure they are uh, they are more than considered that they're part of the transportation master plan. How do you see the process going forward as far as the, the timeliness of the, the completion of the transportation master plan? Well, our transportation uh, master plan is somewhat linked to our uh, to our official plan, so uh, we we're, we're planning on either being ahead of, or just or, or just right behind the official plan. Uh, some of our official plan policies, um, and our transportation master plan policies need to n need to mesh. So we're 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 seeing us rolling this out uh, with some public consultation early in 2016, um, uh, w with uh, uh, with with our plan coming forward to council. Uh, sometime in, in, in 2016. So um, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. We've had a number of, um, of public consultations. We've, um, we've had some really um, interesting um, uh, engagements with, 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 the, uh, with the younger community. We've, we've done a, a, a number of promotions with, uh, with some of the uh, elementary schools. We, we were at the uh, M.M. Robinson event where we see champions um, in w within schools, champions, principals, school teachers that are that are encouraging the the younger generation to think outside the car, and 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 th and think that there is th that alternative. And and I think for 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 a number of generations that really hasn't been that, that hasn't really been um, 
uh, been put out there. So we're, we're looking forward to, to continuing that. It, it doesn't stop with our transportation master plan. We, our, our group, our planning group, plans to continue to push that uh, to push those policies because typically transportation master plans sit on the shelf and uh, and they and we don't do much with them and if we don't uh, it, it'll just be a, a document that we update every every four years you know, it's interesting I've read many articles about the fact that uh, more and more younger people are opting to not get their license or not get their license to drive a car right away I know the day I turned 16 I was in Aldershot uh, applying for my beginners permit and I got it that day because that was really important but that is not necessarily the case for many younger people today uh, earlier this week I had the opportunity to host a group of Millennials people in their late 20s and early 30s about half a dozen people and we talked about you know the future of the city and what they see uh, in order for us to attract more youth in our community and we heard about transit and we heard about, um, uh, about, about cycling that we need to make it safe and easy for people of all ages to cycle and get around by transportation as well as making our community uh, more pedestrian friendly. Um, we got lots of work to do, and it's very, very exciting. Um, Rick, when you look back at all the uh, development that's occurred along Plains Road, is there any development that stands out that you can really take a lot of pride? I know a lot of it you can take a lot of pride on. Is there one particular development that really stands out that you're especially proud of? Well, certainly the library building is the one that people look at and say, boy, that is truly an achievement. And of course, as you know, our new library building uh, includes a seniors uh, Halton Community Housing Corporation uh, set of apartments and 10 of those units are designed specifically for seniors with disabilities. It's an attractive building, it's close to the street, adds amenities, uh, very interesting and people love it so we're really proud of it. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for participating in the discussion today on Burlington Matters. Uh, for James Ridge, our City Manager, Ward 1 Councillor Rick Craven, and Vito Talone, our Transportation Director, I'm Merrick Goldring. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in to Burlington Matters. We will see you next time on TV Cogeco, truly local television. Thanks for tuning in.